guys, my name is Leslie DePiro from Leslie's in the House. Today's video is going to be a little bit, well, a lot of it off topic. I'm going to talk about signs that I've received from my mom and dad since they have passed. So if this topic resonates with you, welcome. If not, no worries. Make sure to tune in next week for a brand new video related to all things about home decorating and design. So I've decided that today, instead of being sad on the one year anniversary of my dad's passing, I'll instead share all the wonderful signs I believe my parents have sent me and my family. So what are signs? Signs or gifts can be anything that is unique to you and your loved ones who have passed. For example, cardinals for me represent my parents. A pair have been visiting me and my family for about six months now. Just to give you a little background about my parents, Rudy and Marianne did everything together. If you saw one, you knew the other wasn't too far behind. Their birthdays were one week apart. They also sadly passed four weeks apart from each other. Together, my parents spread joy to anybody that they met, whether it was a family member or a complete stranger. So, unfortunately, my dad had some long-term health issues that eventually required him to move into a long-term nursing facility. This devastated my mom, who was so used to being with him 24-7. Although the nursing facility wasn't too far away, I took her to visit my dad every day. It still was not enough for my mom. My mom, who was nine years younger than my dad and in pretty decent health, suddenly started having serious health issues. Only eight short months after dad moved into a long-term nursing facility, now mom moved there too. My opinion, mom suffered a broken heart. At their new home, everyone fell in love with my parents and their love story. So much so, the staff at the nursing facility decided to host a wedding vow renewal. It was very, very touching for all of us, especially since we had no idea that this would be our last time that our extended family would be all together. Looking back now, I feel this was the very first sign for that was given to our family, even before my parents passed. Tragically, both my parents died from COVID-19 in early spring of 2020. Because of this horrible pandemic, my family wasn't able to be by their side. And tragically, we could not give them a proper memorial that they so much deserved, all because of COVID-19. Okay, now that you know a little bit about my parents and their story, now it is time to share the signs or gifts as I like to call them that my parents have sent me since their passing. So our family, as you can imagine, was extremely heartbroken to lose two of the most important people in our lives. However, I know they are not too far away because they continuously are sending signs that they are with us. So that is what my video is about today. How about you? Have you ever received any signs after you have lost a loved one? I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know in the comment box below. So I'm gonna share just a few of the very many signs that I started receiving from my parents about six months after they passed. Like I mentioned earlier, my parents' birthdays were a week apart. So after they passed, on their birthday, as a family, we wanted to send my parents some love notes. We bought beautiful red heart-shaped balloons, and we each wrote a birthday message to my mom and dad. We went outside, and we were standing in our driveway, and we were getting ready to release the balloons when my husband said, look over to the tree right next to our driveway. Look what's in the tree. And when I looked over, there was a cardinal and its mate, sitting there. Now, I don't know much about birds, to be honest. So I don't know if February is a common time for cardinals to be around. I mean, birds are around all the time, but I don't know. For some reason, I'm thinking cardinals are usually not around in February. However, they sat in that tree, the cardinal and its mate, and we released the balloons, and those cardinals sat in the tree until you could no 
all who see the balloons. Next story. Since we were unable to hold a memorial for my parents, we decided to build a memorial for them in our backyard. We built a beautiful, beautiful waterfall in honor of my parents. And I decided I wanted to surround the waterfall with all sorts of mementos that remind me of my parents. So my father was born and raised in the Bahamas, as was I, and we're very, very proud of that heritage. So I have a Bahamian flag that is surrounding the waterfall. Uh, I have little stones that are engraved for both my parents. As for my mom, grandfather had built a house up in the country in upstate New York, and there was an old cast iron water pump that was on that property that my mother had saved all these years. So I then inherited it and now incorporated it into our family, which is absolutely beautiful. Plus I have angels that represent my mom holding little cardinals, so that's really special to me. But here is where the really special and quite unbelievable story happens. So my father being from the Bahamas, we have a lot of beautiful shells that we've collected over the years. And I had this big, beautiful conch shell and I wanted to incorporate it in my parents' mouth. So I did and I put it there and it just didn't seem right. It was it's so beautiful and pink and vibrant and the fountain is a little more rustic, so it kind of didn't fit in. And I was discussing with my husband how maybe I could bleach the conch shell a little bit to make it look a little older or like rub some dirt on it. Anyhow, it was just a little conversation that we had, no big deal. Well, the very next day I was pulling into the driveway with my younger son and our house is currently under renovation so i went to go look in the backyard to see you know where they were in the process and they had built a foundation wall and i saw something sitting on top of the foundation wall that caught my eye so i walked over and lo and behold it was a conch shell but not only was it a conch shell it was a conch shell that was white and kind of rusted out and bleached by the sun and i said to my son i was just telling daddy how i was looking for this very conch shell so daddy must have found one of our older conch shells in the garage because we're still unpacking for moving to this house and i said to my husband where did you find the conch shell i think that's exactly what i was looking for and he said leslie when i came home it was sitting on the wall and i said that's really strange are you sure and he's like of course i wouldn't make something like that up so next i had to get down to the bottom of where this conch shell came so i went outside and i saw my builder and I asked him, Joe, do you know anything about this conch shell that's sitting on the foundation wall? And he said, yes, I was excavating your property with a backhoe and I was digging up the foundation and all these big boulders were coming up and dirt and whatever. And he said something white caught my eye. So I got out of the excavator and I walked over and I sifted through all the piles of dirt and there was this conch shell. He's like, so I just kind of put it on the wall. I thought maybe you'd like it. Guys, I, you can't make this stuff up, okay? I live in Bergen County, New Jersey. I don't live anywhere near the ocean. This was buried in the ground on the property of the house that we had just recently bought. What's the coincidence of a conch shell of all things being in the ground and we never would have known it was there had we not been renovated. So guys, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about signs because this is just way too coincidental. You could try to explain it away, but instead I am going to believe, and I do believe, that that was a gift from my dad. That was divine intervention. In the midst of all this, my daughter finds out that she has a torn meniscus and requires surgery. Okay, so the day of surgery, however, because of COVID-19 restrictions, I was not allowed to wait in the hospital for her. So while she was having surgery, I decided I was going to go across the street to a cemetery where my sister-in-law, Suzanne, is buried. 2012, I thought it would be a great time for me to go and speak to her and pray and ask her to please watch over my daughter during her surgery. I sat with my sister-in-law and I cried and I prayed. I let it all out after this big emotional release. I was saying my goodbyes to my sister-in-law and I said to her, I said, Susie, we love and miss you so much. And please, please give my parents a big hug and kiss for us because we miss them so, so very much. At that very moment, I heard wind chimes 
looked in the direction of where the, the wind chimes were coming from, which was about three gravestones over. And what does it say on the gravestone? Big letters. Rudolph. Why is that important? Because that's my father's name. So this was somebody else's gravestone that also happened to have that name, Rudolph. I mean, that's not a common name. I never would have noticed that gravestone had I not heard those wind chimes. Again, I felt that was a message from my parents letting me know that they heard me, they heard my wishes. Oh my goodness, guys, I just, I can't. After my visit with my sister-in-law, I went back to the hospital and I was waiting for my daughter to be brought down. And she was still a little loopy and uh, we were having a little bit of fun. But she said to me, Mom, guess what my nurse's name was? She said, Nurse Marianne. My heart, again, started to like pound really quickly. Why? Because my mother's name is Marianne and my mother was a nurse. So again, I, these are signs that I am talking about, guys. If you open your eyes and are aware of these things, you will see these signs every day. And again, you don't have to explain them. I'm not here to debunk or anything. You know what? This is my belief, this is my truth, and it brings me comfort at peace knowing that our loved ones are never too far away. They are with us, maybe not physically. Oh, and you hear those wind chimes? I don't know if you could see behind me. Those are my parents' wind chimes. Those are wind chimes that if you listen closely, they play to the tune of Amazing Grace, and it has a beautiful scripture on it, um, dedication to my parents. So there's another sign from my parents that they're listening. Hi, Mom and Dad. Now this one's a little bit, uh, a little bit of a sad story, but you know what? It's still really important to me. My husband and I had recently gone away on vacation, and we had just come home. We put down our bags, and the first thing, besides seeing my children, so the second thing I wanted to see was my parents' family. And we have a beautiful picture window that overlooks the fountain in our backyard. And as I'm walking into our family room, I happen to notice a big smudge on the middle of this window. And I, as I'm getting closer, I thought, what is that? And as I got closer, you could see the outline of a bird. Sadly, a bird must have flown into the window and it left an imprint on the window. So I did, I went outside to look to see if the bird was there or if it was injured and there was no bird. So I'm hoping that bird is happy and healthy and flying and with its friends and family but it left this impression, which again, for me, birds are a sign that my parents are around. And I just felt like it was like a big welcome home. These small signs really do help me with the grieving process. So I felt it was important, especially today on my dad's one year anniversary of his passing. I will continue to look for your signs and I love them so much and I am so thankful. So hopefully this video and my stories give you a little comfort if you have lost a loved one. The grieving process is a long process and there's no wrong or right way to do it. You just do it. However, I could just speak from experience. The way I get through the tough times is to remember the good times and the wonderful legacy that my parents have left me and my family and I will continue to honor them till my very dying breath. So that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure to stay tuned next week where we'll be back on topic on all things related to home decorating and design. And I so appreciate you giving me the time to express myself and allowing me to share a little bit about the most important people in my life, Rudy and Marianne. Love you, Mom and Dad. Until next time, this is Leslie DePiro from Leslie's in the House. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.